Hello, my name is CT Stealth, and this is an introduction on how to rig a garage door. Uh, this is a bit beginning basics of uh, rigging. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to show you my end result as to what you'll be doing. Uh, I have a controller here in which I can just move up and down on the Y translate, and uh, the garage door will follow along with it. What you'll learn in this lesson will be uh, set driven keys. Uh, limits and how to animate along a motion path to a point of precision. So what I have here is I have uh, I have these four panels. Well, not four. There's actually eight. I'm sorry. Uh, there's eight panels here. They're all independent of one another. And let me just hide this real quick. I have uh, this path. It's basically a curve that I created in the. It's a nerve curve. Uh, created in the side view to uh, precision. Uh, in order for me to be able to animate along uh, a path, I need to make sure the path that I want it to go is as precise as possible. So what I did is I took the EP curve tool located in curves tab. Here's the EP curve tool. And in the side view I created it three curves. One line straight up and down here. Another line straight up and down about right here. And then I created uh, a third curve to connect the two and added some additional CVs. And then I went to Surfaces, Edit Curves, and I attached the curves to each one. I also made sure that um, my direction was starting from down here and leading this way. If you don't know how to make a, a curve in this manner, uh, I would highly recommend that you look on YouTube to figure out how to make these curves because this is actually rather important for this lesson. Over here, I have a simple circle. Uh, it's not currently connected to anything, so I can move it in the scene. And over here is just uh, three other curves. Uh, they don't really nest necessarily have to be as precise as this, but I just kind of made them straight and up and down just to kind of say, hey, there's a controller here. And to uh, kind of make it a light, nice and fancy, you know, so the animator knows which direction uh, to move the circle. Because see, over here it makes sense that, okay, I just pull this and that would be the max. So it's kind of like a little bar. Alright, so what I'm going to do first is I need to set the limits of the circle. I need to make sure the controllers of the circle will fit my parameter because like I said I only want it going up and down I don't want it going left and I don't want it going right it has to go only up and down if the animator accidentally pulls it this direction it might not mean anything to him but he'll have a harder time animating it the whole purpose of rigging this is to make sure that animators have an easier time to rig things well, easier time to animate things so that they can uh, and complete their jobs with efficiency. And that's the purpose of a technical director or a technical animator. So uh, first I'll start with the limits. I'll basically click the attributes here and I'll go to the NURB circle attribute tab. Over here you'll see that there's uh, limit information. It'll typically be closed, so mine's currently open. But you'll have these, uh, tr these translates, rotates, and scales. Uh, uh, my circle is not rotating or scaling, so I'm just going to close those. And the only thing that's going to be limiting is the translate Y. Okay, so I have my translate Y Y currently at zero. I need, and you'll notice that I have these other two numbers here. So there's an X and then there's a Z. What this tells me is that my nerves circle has actually un undergone some transformation. So, this is very interesting to note because you need to be very careful on what you do. Um, an animator would like to start with a fresh slate. They want to be able to have things set at zero and then set to a maximum number that would be provided to them via the technical animator. So for this, if I'm going to go over here to my channel box, you'll see that I'll have translate Z and X and then scale and stuff. That means I've, added, I've edited this NURB circle in a certain way. So what I need to do is I need to select everything and I need to go right click 
and go to freeze all which it sets everything at zero I do this because like I said the animator needs to make sure that it's uh, at zero so let's just say that I I move this up just a little bit and you'll notice the translate Y here is now has a variable to it it has a number that's associated to what uh, the editing I just made so if I move this up and down this is not going to be a nice number my lowest point will be this weird random number here but that needs to be zero for an animator that way they don't have to keep you know making sure it's precise so you need to make sure you freeze your transformations so now I'll come back to the NURB circle tab and locate in the attribute editor I don't need to worry about the limit X and the limit Z so I can just ignore those all I'm going to primarily focus on is this Y the current is zero which is what I want so for the minimum I'm going to click this little arrow here and you'll notice this gray box turn to zero you probably won't notice that in YouTube but and then I'm going to check this box and this basically tells it okay you can't go any farther down than zero so no matter how hard I try it'll never go down so let's, there we go all right now I need to set the, the maximum so I'm gonna move the curve up to here and it looks like uh, roughly about eight would be the highest um, it's giving me a decimal number but like I said animators want an easy number to remember so I'm gonna make the maximum eight and press enter then I'm gonna click this arrow here and you'll notice this side gray box will change to the number I just put in this current so now I'm gonna check the max box so now my circle will only go up and down now I need to figure out how in the world I can move this from prevent these from going back and right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here to the ad, the channel box, and I'm going to look at the attributes located down below. It's not going to be scaling or rotating, so I'm going to select them all and I'm going to lock them. But there's a special option here called lock and hide, which is what I'm wanting to use. This tells the animator, please don't touch this, and uh, it goes to another far off place. If you ever need to get back to that, you can always come back to the uh, edit and then go to channel control and you can easily add other attributes to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two and lock those and now I have uh, the, just the translate Y and the visibility here. I, I keep the visibility just in case the animator wants to, you know, um, turn off this control via, you know, there's, there's a lot more stuff in the animation. So I leave the Y and I'll leave the visibility. Alright, so I'm about to run out of time for my first video, so I'm going to just pause it and I'll continue on in the next video and I'll see you in a minute.